All right, so this maybe will close out unit one. So we're gonna deal with continuity and piecewise functions. And then we're also gonna deal with the thing called the intermediate value theorem. So sometimes um, AP will ask you to do something like a problem like this, where it's you're given this piecewise function and you know that you, know, you jump from the top function to the bottom function when x equals negative 12. And they're asking you, well, what's, what do you make k so that this is continuous? Well, so if it's a multiple choice, it, it, it doesn't have to be quite so formal. But if it's a free response, really what you need to do is you need to kind of think to yourself, what would we need to get this to be continuous? We would need the limit as x goes towards negative 12 of f of x to be equal to, and, and coming from the left-hand side, it would be need to be equal to the limit as x goes towards negative 12 from the right-hand side, and we would need that to equal f of negative 12. So that's really the stipulations we need. We need the limit from the right to equal the limit from the left to equal the, the value of the function. So if we were going to do this, we are going to, um, we're going to, we're going to calculate all three of these things and then make sure that we match up and figure out what's the value of k that's going to allow us to match up. So if it's a free response type question where you'd actually have to answer it, you really want to show these three things. If it's a multiple choice, you can kind of fudge your way a little bit because you're just looking for the right answer. So I'm answering this as if it's a free response and being a little bit more formal with it. So in here, if I, if I look at this, if I were gonna say, okay, well, what's the limit as x goes towards 12? from the left-hand side of f of x. What I would say that is, is that's negative 4 times negative 12. Sorry, this should be negative 12 in here. There, that should be negative. There's negative 12 plus 92. Now, if I continue this, so if I take negative 4 times negative 12 plus 92, I end up with 140. Okay, so I know the left side limit equals 140. So what we need is we need the right side limit. So as x goes towards negative 12 from the right side would be k times negative 12 plus 8. And um, so we need that. And we know that um, f of negative 12 is the same thing as, uh, so that's negative 4 times negative 12 plus 92. So that's also equal to 140. So we know that that's equal to 140. So here's what we need then. We need the left side limit to equal the right side limit. We need to figure out what k value uh, allows that to be equal. Um, if we subtract 8 from both sides, and so then we have 132 divided by negative 12, we'll get that k has to be negative 11. And that's our answer. So that's what we need to have happen. So you really do have to answer that in a really more formal way, and that's what we need. We need those two limits to be equal, and we know that that function equals 140. All right, so let's do another example. Take something like this, same idea. We need the limit as x goes towards two from the left-hand side to equal the limit as x goes towards two from the right hand side to be equal to f of 2. Well, we know f of 2, this piece right here, is k times 2 squared, or 4k. So 
So that's what we know that is. Um, we know that if we're approaching, if we are looking for the limit as x goes towards 2 from the left hand side of f of x, that's going to be equal to k times 2 plus 20 or 2k plus 20. And we know the limit as x goes towards 2 from the right hand side is also what f of 2 is, so that's that 4k. So again, in this problem, we need, in order for our function to be continuous, in order for us to not make a jump from one function to the other one, we need 2k plus 20 to equal 4k. Subtract 2 from 2k from both sides. We know k has got to be 10. If we make k equal to 10, we're going to be good. Hopefully that makes sense. But if you're doing a free response, you really need that first line. If you're not doing a free response, really you're looking at just that red part, honestly. Um, if you're doing multiple choice, you could just use that red part to answer the question. But if it's a free response question, or I'm asking you to show work, or AP is asking you to show work, you've got to be much more formal. And so with an FRQ, this is really needed for an FRQ. That whole thing. Um, for a multiple choice, you just need what's in red. All right, so now we're going to get to a thing called the Intermediate Value Theorem. The Intermediate Value Theorem says the following. If f of x is continuous, on inter an interval from A to B, then there exists at least one value C on the interval A to B such that F of A is less than F of C is less than F of B. So the idea is, okay, first of all, let me back up. Without this, you cannot use the intermediate value theorem. So it is the easiest thing to check. If this func if a function says that that it, if it doesn't explicitly state that it that the function is continuous, you can't use the intermediate value theorem. Um, if um, if it says that, then there's at least one value on a b such that um, one value C in between A and B such that that Y value is in between the other two Y values. The idea is this. If we were to draw a graph, something like this, and I were to mark A here, B here, and arbitrarily I just make F of A here, and arbitrarily make so it's right there, and f of b here, and maybe I make it up here. What this is saying is if I draw a function that is continuous between a and b, so if I draw a function that's continuous, so it doesn't have any holes or jumps or asymptotes, there's going to be a value in here, c is going to be in there, in such a way that f of c shows up there. No matter what I do, as long as I'm drawing a graph that goes like this. If I pick c to be here, then I know that f of c is going to show up there. 
So that's, but if without, without continuity, none of this works because you have to have continuity in between there because if you don't have continuity, you could have a jump in the graph and you could jump right from A to F of A to F of B and you would never get that F of C in there. So you have to have continuity. Without continuity, it doesn't work. So let me show you an example. Take this example right here. Um, looks like there's some hidden stuff in there. The function f has a domain from negative 9 to, uh, to 9 and is plotted below such that a portion of the graph on the interval negative 4 to 5 is hidden from view. It's given that f of negative 4 is negative 2, so it's given that in a word down here, um, it's given that f of 5 is negative 7, so we know that we have it right there. Um, you know, you know that somewhere in there, there's going to be an axis that runs down here. Roughly like you know, something like that. And you know there's an axis that goes across here. So you know you got these axes in there. Um, the question is, determine what conclusions can be made from the intermediate value theorem. Well, if you're going to make a conclusion from the intermediate value theorem, what do you need? It's a question to ask yourself. The answer is you must have continuity. Do you see the word that F is continuous? The answer is no. So since f of x might not be continuous, intermediate value theorem does not apply. You can't use the intermediate value theorem because you have to have continuity and we were not told this function is continuous. So we don't know what we can what we conclude. Okay, there's nothing to conclude. It may just be that there's nothing in that window. We don't know what's in there. Without continuity, we don't know what happens in that window. So let me show you one where continuity is established. Take something like this one. Given that this function f of x is continuous, there you go. Now we can use the intermediate value theorem. We've established continuity. We have this thing where um, we are, we have these axes. I'm just going to draw the axes in there. They're there. Um, we know that from this, uh, from the work in here, we're given that <clears throat> this function is continuous. We're given that f of negative 1 is, is negative 4. We're given that f of 6 is, is 2. What conclusions can be drawn? Um, we can say because f of x is continuous, then by the intermediate value theorem, there is at least one x equal to c on the interval negative one to six such that f of c is on the interval from negative 4 to 2. That's what we can conclude. Somewhere in there, we can find some value that is in between negative 4 and 2. We can find some value x 
because in order to connect these two, in order to connect these two, we are going to hit every value, every y value between 2 and negative 4 will be hit in between negative 1 and 6 for x values. Hopefully that makes sense. Ask questions if you don't understand something next time we're in class.